I think you're on mute. We can't hear you. Recording. Alyssa? Can you hear me? Oh, now we can hear you, yeah. No. It says recording, but I don't see like a timer or anything. As long as it has the red button, we're good. Yeah, it says recording. I see it on my screen too. So when it's over, like, what does it do? <laughs> So when you end the meeting and leave the meeting, it'll do this like bar mm -hmm. where it's going to start to create an MP4, an audio and a video folder. It's going to create three folders. Okay. You have to tell it where you want to save it. And then if you want to send it to me, I can upload it to the YouTube video. Or if you want to upload it to your own YouTube video and just send us the link, that'll work too. Okay, um, I'll probably send it to you because I don't have like. Okay, that's fine. I just don't want to mess it up. No worries. So like I said, it'll it'll create the three. I just need the one that says MP4, and that's the one I'll upload to YouTube. Okay. It takes. It depends on how fast your internet is and how fast it'll convert the video to that MP4, so you can upload it. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Austin. What was the what, what what were you saying? Sorry. No, you're good. Um, we're supposed to be talking about after reading the webpage and watching the videos, think about unifying visions that accompany it. And your team meeting, comment on some aspects of these visions as they relate to our readings and also relate all of it, all of this to your own dreams or aspirations regarding ASU. So there was like an ACU video, to, like a short video to watch, and then there was basically um, two music videos um, to watch, and then there's like a really long two-hour movie that you could watch if you wanted. Did you guys do the reading? Which reading? The Tony Horwitz, the Blue Latitudes. The one about Captain Cook and all this stuff? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. wild. Yeah. yeah. I was like, whoa, Why? this is not good for children to read. <laughs> yeah, not so much. I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, they need to get out of Tahiti. They need to get out now. <laughs> I know all the sex and venereal disease and cannibalism, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, what am I? What did I pick up the right book? <laughs> it's like maybe I picked up the wrong Captain Cook series, but this looks a little like risque over here. What is going on? Yeah, and he was like lashing people, and at the end they delivered him in a cute little package in front of his thigh, and I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it was getting crazy. Um, I really. Didn't think it was going to end that way, though. Yeah. It is a little bit weird. In comparison to the sh leadership challenge that we've been reading, switching to that book, I was like blushing while I was reading that book. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not watch the two-hour – was that the Selma? Is that what he – the one that you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, watching the Selma movie. Yeah. Did anybody watch the Selma movie? Is that for this module? Yeah. Yeah, they recommended watching that before doing any of the other like videos or even watching the ASU one. So to recommend watching that first, but um. I did watch like. I, in addition to what we we're supposed to do, I also watched the extra credit videos that they had for the discussion board. Those were very interesting as well. Uh, one guy was talking in Spanish. I was like, oh, okay, sounds good. No one's going to understand that unless they speak Spanish. And then at the end, he says the entire thing over again in English. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, this is fun. So, yeah, very interesting concepts in this this part <laughs> um okay Austin, do you want to lead us off on the discussion 
Yeah, so I mean, the first one is just talking about, it says ASU is a comprehensive public research university measured not by whom it excludes, but rather by whom it includes and how they succeed. Advancing research and discovery of public value and assuming fundamental responsibility for the economic, social, cultural, and overall health of the communities it serves. Um, basically, it says to pull up the ASU website, um, the link that they give you on the uh, Word document. Mm -hmm. and says, After reading the webpage and watching the videos, think about the unifying visions that accompany it. In your team meeting, comment on some aspects of these visions as they relate to our readings and also relate all of this to your own dreams or aspirations regarding ASU. Anybody want to touch on that? So I, I had already seen that video. I don't know if you guys, I, I told you guys I walked graduation in May and they actually played that at graduation. Um, so that was like the second time I've heard it. And I mean, I like how they talked a lot about um, exclusion and inclusion. And it's more about, you know, you're really trying to focus on who you're including, which is, you know, you're trying to include everybody. Um, and, you know, thinking about the different aspects of kind of like how people are generally excluded, thinking about how you can include them, you know? And so, I, I mean, I get it. I don't think it's like mind blowing, you know, like, I, I think we all know that diversity is really important. It creates a lot of creativity and it has that inclusion and we all really, we need that in every organization we have and we really don't want to try, well, we, no, I don't think anyone tries to ex exclude people, but it just happens, you know? Mm -hmm. So really trying to focus on including them and, you know, and creating a vision that includes everyone is going to um, be a more successful vision, you know? Yeah, um, in, I think it was chapter six, it talked a lot about um, kind of, in, it, that was the whole thing that chapter six was about, right? It was about enlisting others, and it was about being able to try to share your vision and make it something that other people ignite on and kind of... Um, in, in a passionate way, per se. Um, and everyone has different values, has different goals, has different, you know, hopes and dreams, per se. But when it comes to ASU, and my thought process is we're all there for one reason, to get a higher education. What your motives are behind getting that higher education may be different, the end goal for everyone who is there is that, right? To get higher education, whether it be your bachelor's, your master's, your doctorate, your PhD, whatever it is, right? Um, and so irrelevant of where you want to go, your goal is still united by ASU and therefore it is united in a vision as one to be, help you to accomplish whatever your educational goal is. And I think that's what that video really is trying to entail that no matter what you do and no matter what you, what you want, you can still get it at ASU and including everyone that's there. Alyssa, what do you think? Well, I definitely agree with that. And you're talking about that short, like four minute video, right? Yeah, and I also, not only did I like that they were very inclusive, I liked how they were also making about making it about um, impacting like not just the school but making a difference like in the world and like they're like what's the point if we're not making a difference in the world and I thought that was really cool in the video. I like how you touched on the world not like how can you make a difference just with you but how can you make a difference with the world. Like one of them said, like, um, we need to make an impact among the 7 billion. And I wrote that down because I really like that. Yeah, in chapter six, like you were saying, there's a graph that um, talks about a leader showing others that their long-term interests can be realized 
by enlisting in a common vision. So kind of like you said, if everyone is got a common goal to, you know, go to school and graduate, like you said, but they could be for different reasons, but if they all come together and do it um, and have a common vision, I feel like a lot bigger things can be accomplished, especially in terms of, uh, like you said, reaching out to the 7 billion people in the world um, and making a difference. Uh, and, and to that, going back to a little bit of Tony Horwitz, Captain Cook was destined to, by, uh, by all standards, was destined to do one thing, right? He was destined to become this laboring farmer boy, just like his father ever was, right? But instead, he chose to make that change. And by making that change within himself, he literally changed the world. He mapped places and went to places that no one ever thought even existed. So that kind of goes hand in hand with that in one impact can change the world, can literally change the way the world looks for, you know, hundreds of years and for hundreds of generations to come. Like I couldn't believe when they said that for 200 years, they've used his surveying maps and, and didn't update them until the 90s, 1990s. And I was like, are you kidding me? That must, like he had to have done exceptional work. And sometimes I feel like they didn't talk a lot about the crew, like while he was surveying, like they talked a lot more, a lot about the stuff they did on the islands, I felt. But I was like, even though they didn't talk about the crew on the ships as he was surveying, I can't imagine that they couldn't, they didn't share in his vision of doing that as well. Because to accomplish something that great, he had to have had a good team with him. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, they talked about him having like engineers and botanists and things of that nature, but they never really said they were experts at like navigation mm -hmm. or, you know, nautical engineering. Like they never said any of that. But he seemed to have been exceptionally good at whatever he did. And like you said, they didn't even update these till 1990. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that blew my mind. <laughs> I was, not that I'm going to call myself old, but I totally am going to throw myself under the bus. Like, I graduated high school in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that is scary. <laughs> Because I have to think, I mean, the computers were around then, and I'm trying to think, they must have had, like, satellites up by then, and to, there must have been so much better surveying tools 200 years later, you know? Like, how could no one have updated these? Maybe no one had, like, you know, years and years of free time to just go circling the earth. <laughs> getting drunk and having sex at all these different islands. <laughs> <laughs> or they figured somebody else already did the work and they didn't feel a need to change it, so they just went with it. That's true. They could have been like, oh, it's kind of, it's pretty much right. Just go with it. It's fine. <laughs> all right. What else is on that paper? Uh, well, then it says after you talk about that, then you move on to the leadership challenge um, and discuss these questions. So question one is what visions do you have for your future personally and professionally one year from now, five years from now, and what challenges must be overcome to make this happen? This kind of reminds me of the very first one that we did where we had to share our dreams and goals, aspirations, fears, Blah, 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 blahs. Because we had to go back to goals, right? One year, five year goals. Austin? Yeah. What are your goals? One, five, 10, 15, 20, whatever goals. <laughs> um, I'd say for a, a year, it'd be for, um, we have a thing called Summit. I really want to take my team to summit. It's you have to be um, in the top like two store managers in the entire 
market in order to go. Um, last I checked, I was at like four. So I've been climbing the rankings, trying to make it in that top two. And they usually choose a place that the whole company goes to. So it's like each market meets up there, different leaders, uh, different representatives, all that kind of stuff get to meet up. It's an all paid for trip um, where you just get to kind of relax and hang out um, and socialize. So that'd be a big accomplishment to hit that. And then five years from now, um, I hope to be sitting in the director role, which would be two promotions from where I'm sitting. I think in order to get there, the challenges that I have to overcome, um, it's a tough question. I mean, I don't really have any roadblocks right now other than just getting more experience under my belt, I guess, knocking that out. Um, and just making small achievements along the way to get me to where I need to be. So what about some personal things? I mean, I guess they mean like outside of work, right? Or are they meaning like? Yeah, I guess. Um, I guess one year from now, I don't know, I really want to travel some more. Um, never really been outside of the, the first time I was outside of like the US Mexico area was on my honeymoon when I went to Costa Rica. So it doesn't, um, so next spring I'm hoping to go to Europe um, to travel. That'd be kind of fun. Other than that, I mean, personal goals accomplish more in my house, finish my basement. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Get back in better shape. Everybody's eternal goal. Get back into better shape. I'll yeah. be on my deathbed going, I need to get in better shape. If I was only in better shape. Okay, who's next? Hope streams. I eat them for breakfast. Let's go. All right, I'll go next. So one year from now, which seems like super close. So I'm like, man, what can I really do in a year? But I'm hoping to graduate and then they're going to open up a new position for me. Um, so I'm going to move into that. Uh, hopefully, right? Nothing's promised. And then um, I told myself, so and then, and then in five years, I want to move up into a significant management role. Um, definitely down the line, maybe I think later it asks for like 20 and 40 years in the future, you know, within like 10 years, I think I'd like to be in like a director kind of role. Um, but I don't, I don't see myself working forever just because my husband owns his own business. And I think as our kids all graduate that I will start taking a bigger role in the business and I'll probably end up quitting my job to, to help him. Um, so those are kind of that. And then personally, um, you know, we do have five kids and so I think a lot about them right now and I think you know I just have to get the we just had one graduate yesterday from high school and so I'm like okay one down four to go so <laughs> our youngest is eight so we still have another 10 years of kids at home at least um but I think a lot about teaching the kids and guiding the kids and really being a good role model to them and I think these things that I'm doing now is helping with that um, and, and then I think about in 10 years when I have a life again with no kids, I'm like, okay, well, I have all these hobbies and I tell my husband that they're old lady hobbies that I need to start taking up. Um, so, you know, things like knitting and quilting and crocheting and, you know, like people, old people things. Um, and I actually wrote down just like Austin said, go back to the gym. So um, <laughs> that, that is on my list. So, um, yeah, that's it for now. Alyssa. Um, professionally mine are pretty general just cause I still don't know what I want to do yet. So I'd say a year from now, 
I'll be graduated, so I hope to find a stable job. And five years from now, um, like having moved up in that job. It's hard to say because I don't know what I want to do yet. So I don't know my exact goals. But personally, a year from now, I want to visit a country I haven't been to before. <laughs> and five years from now, I want to buy my own home. Those are mine. <laughs> What's your, what's the number one country you want to go visit right now? Uh, Greece. Like, I really want to go to Greece. Because I've been to a couple others, but that's where I want to go next. What other ones have you been to? Um, I mean, I've been to Mexico and parts of Europe. Yeah. I think in 10 years, I want to go to Italy. There's my goal. I, I said it, it's gonna happen. <laughs> you put it out in the universe, now start packing. <laughs> um, okay, so for me, professionally speaking, I'd like to be a senior director by that point. Um, but just for a little bit, <laughs> not for a lot. Because <laughs> I really don't want to have to travel again. Um, I want to travel leisurely. I don't want to travel for work. Um, I am, let's see, for, oh, and I want to be able to have my son graduate from college. Um, and I want to, well, I want to graduate from college. Let's start that. Let's start that, you know, hashtag number one. Um, and then personally, um, I want to get in better shape. That's on the top of my list. So sad. Um, I want to have, um, I want to convert this house that I'm living in now into an income property and buy another house that has a pool. <laughs> um, and in five years, I would like to be debt free. And then in 10 years, I'd like to be able to take a six month time span off to just travel the world. I want to do Europe. I want to do South America. I want to do Africa. Um, I want to do East Europe. I want to do Asia. Um, I've done Canada. I've done Mexico. I've done all over the U S I've done Alaska. Um, but I have not done South America or the other side of the pond. So that's my next conquest. I think that's it. That'd be so exciting. Oh. <laughs> Would you do it alone? Um, if one of my kids would want to come with me, I mean, I don't know if I would have like a significant other by then in my life. I tend to be pretty self-sufficient and that's kind of been, <laughs> it's kind of been my little, um, like that's what's really kept me from being able to have someone like in my life because they're like okay she's too independent she doesn't she doesn't need me for anything and I'm like no I don't <laughs> sorry <laughs> I'd love to have you around if you want to stick around but if you get in my way you gotta go <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of men get intimidated by that. I like, I like, yes, yes. <laughs> I have a coworker and she just rags on her husband all the time. And like her saying that she says all the time, and I'm sorry, Austin, is like, men are the worst. And I'm just like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
You said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we marry him anyway. <laughs> I know, right? Get married, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Unless said, don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anytime soon, that's for sure. Yeah. No, I was married for 16 years. And then I was like, mm, that's not working out for me. <laughs> so, yeah, fun times. Fun times. But I only have two kids. Like, How old are they? Becky, you have five. Well, this is my second marriage. So my oh. first marriage, I had all my kids with that husband. We were together 12 years. So me and my husband now don't have any kids together. He has two and I have three and they all live with us. That's a lot of children's. It is. <laughs> that is. Austin, how many kids do you have? Zero. I have two dogs. Those are my so kids. You have two four-legged children. I do. Oof. Oof. Well, at least you know you're a good leader because they follow you. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, do you have any kids? No. I do have a dog, though. Oh, you do have a four-legged child. Yes. I just see them as being children as well because you got to feed them and water them, take them on walks, pick up after them. <laughs> I mean, really, who is serving who in the dog service world? <laughs> like, we have to feed them. We have to water them. We have to pick up after them. Like, who's doing who a favor here? Right. Yeah. We have three dogs and an aquatic turtle. And my mom, she's always like, yeah, she tells everyone, she's like, yeah, Becky, this is her second marriage. She has five kids, three dogs, a turtle, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah, so I got to ask you, like, how, so you work full time. Uh -huh. You have five kids. Yep. You have multiple four-legged creatures. Mm -hmm. You go to school full time. Yep. Wow, so you don't sleep or eat. Is that I what you're know. saying? And I teach violin and piano lessons and I volunteer. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't do any. I just, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, I don't, how do you get anything done around the house? I don't know. Sometimes I have to have a mate come in. <laughs> Seriously. No, like, legit. Yeah. Like, I would be like, I don't know. I'm sleeping right here. Why? Well, because I'm not. I can't make it to my room. I'm too busy. So just leave <laughs> me here. Just wake me up later. <sighs> I know. I'm getting kind of burned out. This is my last semester, and I'm like, after this is done, like, what, what did I do before I didn't have school? I don't know. Maybe I slept more. I think I watch TV. I don't watch any TV. I don't either. People talk about all these TV shows, and I'm like, I don't have time to follow a TV show. <laughs> I don't, yeah I really don't like people are surprised that like you don't have cable I'm like no I'm like my kids have Netflix but that's it like, I, nobody watches cable my daughter is a violinist my son is a nerd he loves academics he's like an honorable student kid in high school and I work full-time and I go to school full-time who has time to watch TV? Like, I'm sure there's interesting stuff on it, but I just don't have time to watch it. Well, and that's one thing. Like, if you bump down to question six, where it said, how can you challenge your processes to make yourself into a lifelong learner? And one thing I, I actually wrote down was, like, the TV shows I do watch, like, when I do have time, like, because I can't follow a series that builds upon itself. So my husband and I, we like gave up all the junky TV. And if we watch something, we watch something that's like slightly educational, you know, whether it's like, we tend to watch like the science channel a lot and like the history. You know, you're channel. sounding like a little bit nerdy, not right now, right? <laughs> I know. But I don't know. I guess we kind of, does that mean I'm old that I don't like to watch the entertaining stuff that I'm like, hey, let's learn something if we're going to watch TV. 
if you start watching CNN every day, then we might have a little bit of concern. <laughs> well, my, my husband, he likes, oh, no. he, wa he would watch that 24 seven if I let him. And I'm like, I hate the news. So no. <laughs> well, so you're keeping him young. Like all the old people I know, did you watch the news today? Did you see what is happening with the weather? Like that's all I hear. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not watching the news. That means you're old. <laughs> At the youngest? Yeah, she's my mini me. <laughs> That's the best. Now my teenage kids ignore me, but before it was fun. <laughs> Austin, how long have you been married? Uh, this August will be a year. Oh, how cute. You're still in your honeymoon stage. That's adorable. We did things a little backwards. We bought a house before we got married. So, you know. Well, I mean, that was a good, you know, are you really in or are you not? True. Moment. I mean, it's kind of cliche, but they say when you know, you know. I proposed after 11 months of dating, so it was pretty quick. But I, but so... I don't, 11 months, that's not too short. That's almost a year. Of dating? That's kind of quick. I feel like a lot of my friends waited three, four, five years of dating before they proposed. Yeah, but were they living together by then? Some of them, some of them not. Were you? Yeah, we were living together after like a couple of months. Well, see, I mean, by that time, like what's the point? There's no way that I'd ever propose to someone or marry someone without living with them first. Living with someone tells you a whole lot about that person. <laughs> but he's like, yes. Hashtag yes. Number one on the list. Well, I, grew, I grew up Mormon and so you like weren't allowed to live with someone. That was me and my first husband. We didn't we never lived together until we were married, so and now you're divorced. This proves my point. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, actually a, proves Austin's a, point. <laughs> I went to a Seventh-day Adventist boarding school. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> they, like, had boys and girls dorms, like, separate. You weren't, if you got caught, like, holding hands or hugging for too long in high school, they, like, they would ban you guys from seeing each other for, like, a week or something. It was ridiculous. And I was forced to go to that school and I hated it with a passion. Alyssa, your story. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> All the juicy details? Let's go. All the juicy details. Hello. <laughs> are you Captain Cook or are you Dames Cousay? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> She's like, I am in the leadership challenge. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm not married. I, I don't have kids. Um, just kind of doing me right now. <laughs> yeah. I can understand that. Uh, Becky and I are like, oh, the good old times where we could just do us. This is the best time. Seriously. It is. Enjoy it. <laughs> oh, girl, party like it's 1999. <laughs> I was like two years old in that year. So I don't really know. Oh my gosh. Even better, just start chugging bottles. Don't fill them with milk. <laughs> just... <laughs> Dance like no one's watching. It's totally fine. <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. Did you just say you were two years old back then? Oh, dear Lord Almighty. <laughs> yeah, I was born in 97. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm 21. Here, hold on. Let me grab my walker, sweetie. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I know when you were like, I'm old. I graduated in 96. I'm like, well, I graduated in 2000. So, uh. 
<laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Don't wait till you're old to go back to school, boys and girls. Here is the here's the theme of this year's lesson. <laughs> no, this is bad enough. It is. I was very lucky that in medical billing and coding, I made a really good living without having to have a four-year degree until I wanted to make over $100,000. And then they're like, eh, okay, you've hit your ceiling. Now I need you to have a piece of paper that tells me you know what you're doing, even though we know you know what you're doing. <laughs> it's ridiculous. This is the only reason why I'm doing this. Are you almost done? Um, I have four more classes left, so one more semester, and then I'll be done. But I've got, so I've got a major in um, organizational leadership with a minor in finance and Spanish. So we've got a double minor. That's cool. Are any of you guys doing a minor at all? No. Hell no. <laughs> I just need a degree. I don't care. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I, I don't even care. Um, are any of you guys going on to do your master's or your doctorate? Probably not. I don't know um, yet. Contemplated master's, but probably not. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe. I looked into it and like my entire, my, the map, the 18 months to do your master for an MBA is as much as your, like two times as much as your four year degree at ASU. Yeah, it costs you $60,000 to go to school for 18 months. I'm gonna change the answer to no then. <laughs> I'd like to change my answer to B. B is no. That's crazy. <laughs> it is. And I thought of doing health of um, healthcare administration. That was a little bit less. Forty nine thousand. <laughs> that kind of ruins my five year plan of being debt free. So no. <laughs> okay, Austin. Do we have anything else we need to yappity yap about? There's more questions. It says, under the best of conditions, what visions would you wish to see for your team or workplace one to five years from now? Um, I mean, I don't, if I'm not currently in that store, obviously I'd still want them to be successful, hopefully leaving it in a place to where they continue to keep crushing it and killing it. Um, it's a good feeling after you leave a location and you know that they're still doing well. Obviously, it shows that you did something right. So, I mean, maybe I guess my vision for that store after I leave. I think that says a lot about you that you would care even if you left. I mean, I still follow the other store that I was at for a couple of months down in Denver before I came to the store I'm at now. So it's, really? it's fun watching the stores that you originally were at. I've been in. Um, four different stores now so not current not all as a leader but just overall and so i keep track of them just to kind of keep tabs i'm friends with you know quite a few different people at those locations and we like to talk talk a lot of smack talk trash to each other <laughs> uh, keep it competitive i'm a very competitive person so um it's it's fun on on good fun for sure but you want to see all your peers and you know the people that you've put a lot of blood sweat and tears into you know succeed so What about you guys? So I wrote down um, paper out here that um, like we just recently came up with a vision statement like we didn't have one in our department but so we like came together and kind of collaborated and I, and I feel like we talked a lot about vision in the book and how you know there was that one story about like Kent where he like 
the guy came and told her about his vision and the, I can't remember the four letter acronym he came up with and he was like oh it ignited this fire and passion to me and like so we came out with his vision statement but there was no ignited fire or passion in anybody you know and I'm like oh my gosh like that's what we needed like something that had more of that kind of effect and so I really thought like well maybe I need to like go back to my supervisors and and really talk to them about maybe even revising it again, you know, to try and really, it said, you know, that you should try and, you know, evoke like emotions and stuff from it and make it sound um, like to where it creates like a, a image in your mind kind of thing. And I just don't feel like ours did that. It was one of just those nice sentences, you know, that you're like, oh, nice. So I feel like that's something that, and it's hard in government. I I feel to like have that passion that ignites people. And I, I think that's really something that I would love to see in our workplace is, is that passion. And I feel like we get a lot of jaded employees after a while and yuck. So that was just something I, I wanted to work on in the next five years. Alyssa, do you want to go or do you want me to go? Um, I'll go. Uh, for me, I've worked at my work for less than a year. And so I'm not like, and I don't plan on staying there after I graduate, if I'm being honest. But my goals for them, like we're barely starting to like branch into other states. Like we're in Arizona, Colorado, Texas, New Mexico. So my goal for them is just to keep expanding east and, oh my God, <laughs> keep expanding <laughs> east and keep creating more jobs for people, so. This is a tough one for me. Um, so in thinking about this, I didn't know how to answer because so much of my job involves constant growth that it's kind of hard to envision that not being a part of the usual. I don't know if that makes sense. Like that's what I do. I bring on practices and I do all the onboarding and I do everything that goes along with it. So for me, doing that is just part of my job. But I guess in, in the future, looking at it, I would like us to break through $20 million in a month and just being able to see that successfully grow to that gauge and know that I was part of it. You know, I think that's, that's it. How far away are you guys from hitting that goal now? Right now, we're at about 49.8% of that. Um, we just hit $9.348 million this month. So we're almost at that 10, 10 million mark. And if I can get to double that, then I'll be happy. But yeah. If only that was all your money. <laughs> I wish. If I could have, I know I keep telling, I keep telling my VP, I'm like, listen, I'm not asking for much. I'm just asking for a little bit of that. Like we're talking less than 15%. Like that's not a lot. That's not a lot when you think the grand scheme of things. <laughs> He's like, sand. I'm like, I'm serious. You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Austin, you didn't get to answer that. Yeah, I did. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was talk talking about how after I leave each store, I like to keep an eye on it. Oh, I thought this was a different one. No, the next question is now especially if those previous visions were not as far-reaching or positive an outlook as you would wish, let's reframe those visions a bit with questions such as, if I could do blank, 
how would I begin? Or to start making a reality, what would my first step be and my next step? I mean, for me, it looks to me like my dream job would be doing something involving sports, like a sports commentator, a uh, coach, I mean, you name anything involving sports. I love, just, I mean, there's probably not a sport that I don't like watching. So you put it on and I'll watch it. Even golf. Even golf. I mean, I'll watch it. I'd rather watch golf than some other stuff, I guess. I don't know. Golf, I guess, would be my least favorite. <laughs> I like tennis, though, and a lot of people don't like tennis. It takes uh, – if you've ever tried playing tennis, it's a very hard sport to play, um, especially as a baseball player, formerly myself. When you go to swing at the ball, it's not the same kind of swing for sure. It looks really ugly when you try and do that. So. And it goes way too far. <laughs> It's way out there, yeah. It's not good. Nobody wants to play with you when you when you when you can't uh, return. Now, are you speaking from experience when you say these things, or just I am. a friend? Do you heard you heard? No, I can serve, uh, but as far as like returning, it's it's not pretty. Yeah, that's one sport that I think that I would like to try and get better at it. it definitely takes a lot of practice it looks like it would be easy but it's definitely not if any of you guys ever tried playing tennis yeah i have to say i've tried and it has been an epic fail <laughs> i have like zero hand-eye coordination <laughs> we've discovered. <laughs> so yeah. Content. What was the question? <laughs> Anything else anybody would like to make happen if you could? And if so, how would you get there? or you're all living your dream jobs? My dream job involves sleeping all day and having someone else do all my work. Mm. I don't know she how to make that a reality. <laughs> she wants to become a professional snuggler <laughs> while having a maid. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of those Instagram models. Right. They don't do anything but get paid a ton of money to post a bunch of photos from all over the world doing nothing. Amen. Sounds nice. Um, well, what would, what would be everyone's fantasy job? Like, if you could have any job in the world, what would it be? Well, for me, I love, um, like, design and, like, interior design and all that kind of stuff. So... Anything to do with that, pretty much. How about you? But you didn't want to make a career out of it? I mean, I could see it happening. It's just, I don't, I don't know yet. <laughs> but that's like the thing I like the most. When I went to college the first time around, I went to, I went to be a math teacher. And um, and then I decided I didn't like kids that much. So um, I actually think if I would have done it different, I would have been like a, an engineer or something like that, that used math, but like didn't have to be around bratty kids all the time. You like math? I love math. <laughs> like normal math i don't like algebra and that kind of stuff that just there's oh, no place for that all that stuff <clears throat> no have you ever thought about going into medical revenue no <laughs> you like math let me tell you it could be very lucrative for you <laughs> so 
Austin, what's your dream job? Um, well, before all my sports injuries, I mean, I really wanted to continue on with my baseball career. Um, I'm supposed to go pitch in college. I had a Florida scholarship for that uh, and then lost that with injuries. Uh, so that kind of sucks. Um, I mean, other than that, when I first attempted college, before I changed majors like a million times, um, I really wanted to be uh, a elementary education teacher. So I really wanted to teach PE um, along the lines of sports, kids. I love kids. Um, I don't have a problem with being around them, especially if they're not mine. I mean, I, I have only have to put up with them for a little bit and then I just send them on their way back to their parents. So, um, yeah, bye. Um, but yeah, I know I, I really wanted to be a teacher, but then after taking some of the classes, I just didn't think that it was for me. Um, so then I, you know, changed it. I've always been in sales, so I figured I might as well climb up that ladder and get a degree in organizational leadership. So here we are. You, Sandy? Um... I think if I could have my dream job, it would be um, as a world traveler. I would want to travel the world for leisure, not for work more than anything. Um, but if I could go around and not have to be in a thousand and one meetings whenever I do travel and go sightseeing instead, I would totally do that as my job hands down to be able to go to cool places like Machu Picchu and be able to like just you know climb the pyramids of Mexico and Egypt and be able to to look at crystal glass water and just do all those cool things like I'd be all up for that all up for that that sounds like my dream job of getting paid to nap so Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, what's next on the list? Uh, this was kind of weird one, but it says now turn to truly long term over aching or overachieving. Overarching. Oh, overarching, yeah, vision. What vision do you and or your family or team have for twenty to forty years in the future? It says, note, some students cannot resist focusing on material gains, such as profits or savings when thinking of this. And I understand the importance of that, but I want a true vision of what you want to be at a deep level. What do you want your life to mean? And then he goes kind of in a deeper <laughs> means of this. It says, if it helps, reframe question for this way. Though I apologize if this scares anyone, what do you want written in your obituary? Well, given my age, it's like 20 to 40 years. I just want to be alive. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you legit may have to read my obituary by that time. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I just want to stay alive by this point. That's my number one goal. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I could really say that I have a 20 to 40 year vision. Um, without getting into the kind of like the material gains kind of like he's talking about. I don't really know. So when I thought about it, um, see Sandy and I are older, but um, my husband and I, we just bought a house and um, we thought a lot about the future when we bought it. And so we bought a house that had a certain kind of property. And so we had like a pool and a hot tub and a trampoline and a swing set and this 
big area, you know, for RV parking or, and we bought it really thinking about grandkids, even though we don't have any, and the youngest is still eight years old. So, you know, we were like, well, we want a place that's really inviting for our kids to come back one day, you know, so that they can come over and bring all their family and their kids over and we can have, you know, meals as a family and everyone can feel comfortable and not like they're squeezed all together. And it's because I don't know if I feel claustrophobic, then I want to leave someplace, you know? So we try to think about, you know, how we want to see ourselves in 20 years. You know, we want to be the place where all the grandkids want to come and hang out and be with us. And, um, you know, with my husband's business, we talk a lot about, um, cause his kids want to just be part of his business and his mom, when he was little, you know, took in all the grandkids and watched them while all the guys went to work. Cause it's kind of a family business, you know? And I was like, well, you know, I, I want to be that grandma, you know, I don't want to work for forever and not have that time with the grandkids, you know? And if I'm going to sit here and help raise grandkids, then I want to, you know, have these activities like a swing set in my backyard where I can go take them out. And, you know, I want to do all those old grandma things. That's my goal. I want to be that old grandma. <laughs> I don't know. That was my best. They say that being a grandparent is better than being a parent. So I can understand that. And with five kids, I could have a lot of grandkids. I tell that to my husband all the time. Girl, I hope you have a backyard because you're going to be adding to that sooner or later. <laughs> Anybody else? I mean, for me, this question was really hard just because, like, I don't even know where I'm going to be in, like, five years. So I, it's hard for me to think about 20 or 40 years. But, I mean, I just hope to be doing what I love, be surrounded by the people I love. Um, I hope that I got to travel everywhere I wanted to go. And just find, like, a real home by then in 20 years, you know? But nothing specific. <laughs> All right. What's our next question? Uh, it would be the last one. How can you challenge your process to make yourself into a lifelong learner? Watch the science channel. We went over this. <laughs> so were you guys not listening to what I said? <laughs> Watch this. Netflix, My husband's shaking his head because he's back there now. <laughs> she's like, on Netflix, there's 347 shows you can watch. They're all educational. There you go. Watch the documentaries. <laughs> I also like murder shows because they're educational about how they, they find, they figure out the forensics and oh the murderer. Me so. too. Me too. And the worst thing is I get up super early in the morning. I'm usually up by like 4.30 or 5 o'clock. And that's what I listen to when I'm getting ready. <laughs> Once again, this is why I'm single. Because <laughs> I'm listening to murder mysteries at 5 a.m. <laughs> My husband thinks I'm going to murder him one day. I don't know why. <laughs> well, you are becoming a lifetime learner, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any other things that we need to go over, Austin? That's it. All right. Cool beans. Have All right. Thanks, guys. And sorry about that. My schedule got a little psychotic today. Happens. And Alyssa, if you want to send that to me as soon as you're done, then I'll go ahead and upload it and email the link like usual. Okay. Sounds good. And if you need help, call me. Okay. I'll find out as soon as I end this. <laughs>
just <laughs> <Okay. read it. laughs> We will all be waiting on pins and needles to see what happens. Hey, Mom, <laughs> fake news. Fake news. I love it. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good night. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. I want to listen to my book.